We are currently orbited by more than 160 million man-made pieces of space debris, forming a cage of steel, aluminium, and paint chips traveling at 23 times faster than the speed of sound. If space debris continues to pile up, we could create a Kessler effect, a continuously colliding debris field that no satellite could survive and no spaceship could escape, trapping us on Earth. Today, we're looking at four ways to take out the space trash. Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Miles. Welcome to Spin Up Science, where we look at technologies emerging from scientific discovery and the next generation of companies driving forward innovation. Over the past 50 years, humans have made great strides in space travel. We've put a man on the moon, built permanent stations in space, and created a vast network of satellites which are vital to many terrestrial technologies and economies. However, wherever mankind goes, so does the waste we produce, and space is no different. Half a century of both manned and unmanned missions have resulted in the buildup of a cosmic dumping ground. According to NASA and the US Department of Defense, there are currently more than 23,000 pieces of debris larger than a baseball, and roughly 500,000 pieces the size of a marble, and these are the pieces that we can track. NASA's statistical analysis estimates several hundred million millimeter size and smaller pieces of debris. And why is that a problem? Space debris travels in our orbit at speeds of up to 20 kilometers per second, fast enough that even a tiny piece of debris could damage or destroy a spacecraft or a satellite. As an example, a 0.2 millimeter chip of paint traveling at that speed has about the same destructive power as a hand grenade and multiple times have left large impact craters on the windows of space shutters. In 2007, China tested an anti-satellite missile on a defunct weather satellite to prove that it was capable of hitting US space assets. This test alone added more than 3,500 pieces of trackable debris. We risk approaching a point of no return, whereby the amount of debris in space causes a runaway cycle of collisions in an event known as the Kessler Syndrome or Kessler Event. If action isn't taken effectively and actively to reduce the amount of space junk in our orbit, then we risk creating a cage of metal swirling around our planet inhospitable to satellites and untraversable by spacecraft. A major challenge, however, of cleaning up our orbit is finding a way of docking with or capturing space junk in order to recycle it on Earth or to destroy it in our atmosphere. Debris is often tumbling, rotating rapidly across its axis, making mapping a suitable approach vector extremely difficult. Today, I'm looking at four ways of removing space debris, an industry estimated to be worth approximately 1.4 billion as soon as 2028, and offering a way out of the space prison we are making for ourselves. The first technology up is claw capture. ClearSpace is a Swiss-based startup that spun out from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in 2019. ClearSpace has already bid for and secured an 86 million euro, $102 million contract with the European Space Agency to launch their proof of concept mission to retrieve an obsolete satellite. ClearSpace One will feature a conventional chemical rocket powered spacecraft with a purpose built four armed claw, which will first match the orbiting trajectory of a target before extending its arms and grasping onto it. ClearSpace's maiden mission is due to launch in 2025, targeting a Vespa, a Vega secondary payload adapter, a part of a rocket used to carry a satellite into space, which was left over from a launch in 2013. Once ClearSpace One has acquired the client object in its grasp, it will then vector so that it re-enters the atmosphere, causing both ClearSpace One and the payload to burn up on re-entry. A key advantage of this system is that it targets large debris objects, removing them from orbit before a collision turns them into many smaller pieces of debris that would need to be collected. However, mechanical capture of a target requires careful matching of velocities and tumbling behavior so as to prevent further debris generation. The claw system also sets an upper and lower size limit on the objects ClearSpace One can capture. As of October 27th, 2021, ClearSpace was selected by the UK Space Agency to define a space mission able to remove multiple defunct satellites from orbit. With this initiative, the UK Space Agency is driving developments in two critical areas needed for commercially viable debris removal. Multi-removal missions and refueling. Never doubt the power of the claw. Next up on our list is Magnetic Capture. Astroscale is a Japanese company looking to create a magnetic tugboat debris capture system. 
By matching the orbit trajectory of a satellite or debris candidate, Astroscale proposes to magnetically dock to either complete repairs on a satellite or to push the debris into the atmosphere so it burns up. On the 25th of August 2021, Astroscale piloted their end of life services by Astroscale demonstration. The mission successfully demonstrated its capability to capture a client object in a trial run through. Astroscale proposes that all satellites can be pre-engineered with a lightweight magnetic docking plate to make this process more reliable. This potentially means that the system won't be quite as effective for collecting existing objects without these plates. However, where they are available, this should enable easy docking with minimal chance of damaging or creating further debris. As of October 26, 2021, Astroscale Limited, the UK subsidiary of Astroscale, was awarded a UK Space Agency bid to study the removal of two further defunct satellites from space as part of their cosmic program, cleaning outer space mission through innovative capture, reminding us that half of space exploration is coming up with a catchy naming convention. The third approach pioneered by Surrey Satellite Technology Limited is Remove Debris, a project conducted by a consortia of companies in collaboration with the University of Surrey, seemingly taking inspiration from the Roman gladiators, wielding both a net and a spear. The Remove Debris system designed by Airbus features a tethered harpoon and a weighted net casting system. In 2019, Remove Debris successfully tested both capture systems in a series of in-orbit demonstrations. Using their net system, they captured a target CubeSat, which is one of the most common types of small satellite. Their platform tracked the CubeSat and once it was within a 7 meter range, fired their space net so that the deployment masses wrapped around and entangled the target before a motor-driven winch reeled in the neck of the net, preventing it reopening. In their second test, a 1.5 meter boom deployed from the satellite platform with a plate mimicking a satellite on the end of it. The platform fired a special purpose-made harpoon at 20 meters per second to penetrate the target and lock it in place via a tether attached to the spacecraft. The key advantages of these systems is that they are capable of capturing very large pieces of debris without having to match for tumbling properties of the debris object. However, both approaches risk small pieces of debris separating from the larger structure. The fourth and final item that we have on our list is the laser broom, which is the least exciting name possible for space lasers. Electro Orbit Systems, EOS, are an Australian company with experience in developing laser systems for use in the aviation and defense industries. High energy laser pulse radiation may be the most feasible means to mitigate the threat of a collision with a space station or other high value space asset with orbital debris in the sizes of one to 10 centimeters. Under laser irradiation, part of the debris material is ablated or heated and provides an impulse to the debris particle. Proper direction of the impulse either deflects the object trajectory away from the high value asset or slows the debris into an intercept course with the upper atmosphere where it ultimately burns up. The idea would be that this laser system would scan across the sky systematically removing debris targets out of the trajectory of high value space assets. Most research concentrates on ground-based laser systems because arming satellites with laser systems is generally seen as militarizing space, which is a no-no. For ground-mounted approaches though, this means that the systems will need to deal with atmospheric distortions that may make reliably targeting small objects difficult, as well as requiring reasonably high power levels. However, this system can be used quickly to target many pieces of debris, servicing multiple objects much more quickly than physically capturing them ever could. Now technically we don't need to do any of the above, given enough time all objects orbiting the Earth will crash back down through the atmosphere, however, that process is slow. And having some control on where that debris lands rather than it periodically raining down on homes and cities is probably preferable. As our utilization of space ramps up, it's critical to explore in a way that is sustainable, lest the debris builds up and we turn Earth into an inescapable space prison. If you like this video, leave a like or a comment below, subscribe to keep up to date with cutting edge technologies, leaving the lab. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.